is continuity of a Jewish group identity, but in eradication of anti-Semitism. As such, dynamic contextualism can be seen as one of many post-Enlightenment attempts to reconcile Judaism with the, mo- with the modern world. There is no question that Lerner strongly believes in the moral imperative of his position, of his position, but his moral crusade has led him well beyond science in his attempts to discredit biological theories in the interest of combating anti-Semitism. Lerner co-authored an article in the journal Human Development directed at combating the influence of biological thinking in researching in research on human development. McDonald's edited volume, Sociobiology, Perspectives on Human Development, that's by Mac- McDonald, 1988, is predominantly cited as an example of an evolutionary, evolutionary approach deriving from E.O. Wilson's work and as a point of view that has, quote, found support and application, unquote, as their example of how this point of view has been supported and applied. Lerner and von, Sa- uh, von I cite the work of J. Philip Rushton on racial differences in, in, reproducti- in reproductive styles. The implication would appear to be that my, uh, McDonald's edited volume was somewhat a basis of Rushton's work. This is an inact- inaccurate sense. One, the volume was never, men- never mentioned Negroid Caucasian differences in intelligent or any other phenotype. And two, the book was public published after Rushton had already published his work on the R-slash-K theory of racial differences. However, the association between the book, this book, and Rushton is highly effective in producing a negative evaluation of the book because of Rushton's current persona non grata status as a theorist of racial differences. The next section of Lerner and Von I article is entitled, quote, Genetic Determinism as Social Biology's Key to Interdisciplinary Integration, unquote. Implicit is this justification is the, impli- is the implication that the authors in, Ma- in McDonald's edited volume accept the thesis of genetic determinism. And indeed, at the end of the section, Lerner and Von I lump McDonald's edited volume together with the work of a number of other social bio- biologic, biological writers who are said to believe that ana- anato- anomaly, anatomy <laughs> is destiny, that environmental, environmental influences are fictional, and that, quote, the social world does not interact with human genes, unquote. Scholars connected to evolutionary perspectives perspectives on human behavior or behavior genetics have commonly been branded genetic determinists in this highly politicized literature. Such accusations are a staple of, of Goldinian rhetoric and are a major theme of Lee Wotan, Lee Wotan's over overtly political not in our genes that's a his book i rather doubt that any of the writer that's mcdonald rather doubts that any of the writers discussed in this section of lerner and von i's paper can accurately be described as genetic determinists indeed degler accurately summarizes recent evolutionary thinking in the social sciences as characterized by quote a full recognition of the power and influence of of environment on culture on culture unquote However, McDonald wants to stress here that this is a completely inact- inaccurate characterization of his writings, and it is difficult to suppose that Lerner was unaware of this. Two of his contributions to the edited volume are greatly concerned with environmental and cultural influences on behavior and uh, the under underdetermination of behavior by genes. In particular, his theoretical perspective, this is McDonald's, theoretical perspective as described in chapter one of the edited volume, ta- excuse me, of the edited volume takes a strong position supporting the importances of developmental plasticity, plasticity and affirming the importance of contextual influences on human develop, development. And in both of these si- sections of my paper, of McDonald's paper, he cites Richard Lerner's work. However, Lerner and Von I are seemingly careful to avoid actually describing what McDonald's has written. Instead, their strategy is that of innuendo and guilt by association. By placing him, 
by placing McDonald and his work at the end of a section devoted to writers who are supposedly genetic determinists, they manage to imply that all of the writers in the volume are genetic determinists. Unfortunately, such innuendo is typical in tax on evolutionary perspectives on human behavior. The point here is that there is every reason to suppose that a major impetus for these attacks is an attempt to combat anti-Semitism. Lerner begins his preface to his work, Final Solutions, Biology, Prejudice, and Genocide, with an emotionally wrenching portrait of his childhood surrounded by stories of Nazi atrocities. Quote, as, re as a Jewish boy growing up in Brooklyn in the late 1940s and early 1950s, I could not escape Hitler. He, Nazis, the Gestapo, Auschwitz, were everywhere. That's Lerner. Lerner recreates a, co a conversation with his grandmother describing the fate of some of his relatives at the hands of the Nazis. He asks why the Nazis hated the Jews, and his grandmother responds by saying, quote, Just because. Just because. Unquote. Lerner states, quote, In the time that has passed since the afternoon in my grandmother's apartment, I have learned, and increasingly so as the years go by, how deeply I was affected by these early lessons about Nazi genocide. I now understand that much of my life has been shaped by my attempts to go beyond the answer of just because. Lerner states that he chose to study developmental psychology because the nature-nurture issue is central to this field and therefore central to, in his attempt to combat anti-Semitism. Lerner thus apparently actually chose his career in an effort to advance Jewish interests in the social science. In the preface, Lerner cites, in intellectual, cites, cites as intellectual influences virtually the entire list of predominantly Jewish it, uh, predominantly Jew Jewish developmental psychobiologists and anti-sociobiologists mentioned above, including Gottlieb, Gould, Kamin, Lewotin, Rose, Schneerle, um, who was not Jewish, Schlenero was not Jewish, and Tobach, who the Tobach was Jewish. As is common among Jewish historians, Lerner dedicates, de dedicates that the, the book to his family, Quote, to all my relatives, your lives will not be forgotten. Unquote. Clearly, there is no pretense that this book is a dis, dis, dispass, dispassionate scientific endeavor to develop a theory of behavioral development or to come to grips with ethnically ba based social conflict. The central message of Lerner's book is that there is a possible, possible causal chain linking Darwinism to an ideology of genetic determinism, to the legitimization of the status quo as a biological imperative, to negatively e evaluating individuals with, quote, inferior gen genotypes to eugenics, and finally to destruction of those with inferior genes. This storyline is said to have been played out in several historical instances, including the massacres of in American Indians and the Ottoman and the Ottoman genocide, genocide of Armenians, and most particularly in the Holocaust. It is nowhere mentioned that an ideology of genetic determinism is hardly an, a, a, necessi <laughs> a necessary I said it right a necessary condition for genocide, since there are a great many historical examples of genocide in societies where Darwin was unknown, including the annihilation of the Amorites and Medanites by the Israelites described in the Tanaka. Examples that are ignored by Lorner. Nor is there evidence that, for example, the Ottoman Turks were acquainted with Darwin or had views, scientific or otherwise, about the genetic determination of behavior. Lerner's agenda is to discredit evolutionary thinking because of its association with Nazism. The logic is as follows. Although Lerner acknowledges that genetic determinists need not be, quote, racist, and that they may even have, quote, enlightened political views, he states that genetic determinism is an ideology that can be used to give scientific credence to their viewpoint. Quote, the doctrine of biolo biological determinism exists ready for co co by proponents of such a political movement. 
Sociobiology, as the most recent incarnation of the scientific justification of genetic determinism, must be an in intellectually discredited. Quote, contemporary sociobiologists are certainly not neo-Nazis. They do not in any way advocate genocide and may not even espouse conservative political views. Nevertheless, the correspondence between their ideas, especially regarding women, and those of the Nazi theorists, theorists is more than striking, unquote. Lerner correctly describes Nazi ideology as essentially an ideology of group Im imperability, imperability. Quote, the belief that the world may be divided unequivocally into two major groups, an in-group compromising those possessing the best features of human existence, and an out-group compromising the worst features of human existence. There can be no crossing over between these groups because blood or gene divides them, unquote. Similarly, Lee Wotan, in his foreword to Lerner's book, states that, quote, whatever the ge generating forces that keep nationalism alive, they must, in the end, assert the unchanging and unchangeable nature of social identity. Exploiters and exploited alike share in the consciousness of a cultural and biological heritage that marks out in indelible group boundaries that transcend human history development, human historical development, unquote. Lerner and Lee Wotan condemn sociobiology because they suppose that sociobiology could be used to justify such a result. However, the evolutionary theory of social identi identity processes development developed in separation and its discontents, again, that's McDonald's earlier work, as the basis of the theory of anti-Semitism implies just the opposite. Although humans appear to be bio biologically predisposed toward an in-group, out-group conflict, there is no reason whatsoever, no reason whatever to suppose that group membership or group permeability itself is genetically determined. That is, there is no reason to suppose that there is a genetic imperative that societies must be organized around impermeable groups. And indeed, Prototypical Western societies have not been organized in this manner. Social identity research indicates that hostility toward outgroup occurs even in randomly com composed groups and even in the absence of between group competition. The outstanding feature of Judaism has been that it has steadfastly raised barriers between Jews as an in group and the surrounding society as an out group. But though it is reasonable to suppose that Jews are genetically more prone to ethnocentrism than Western peoples, the, the erection of cultural barriers between Jews and Gentiles is a critical aspect of Jew, Judaism as a culture. Moreover, a salient point here is that there is no appreciation in either Lerner or Lee Wotan of the great extent to which Jews have themselves created impermeable groups in which gen, genetic bloodline bloodlines were of the highest importance, in which there were hierarchies of racial purity, and in which genetic and cultural assimilation were viewed as an, an anathema. Judaism as a group evolutionary strategy has resulted in societies torn apart by internal conflict between impermeable competing ethnic groups. Nevertheless, Jewish cultural practices are at least a necessary condition for the group impermeability that has been so central to Judaism as a group evolutionary strategy. It is thus a supreme irony that Lee Wotan and Lerner should be attempting to combat anti-Semitism by saying that ethnic identification and the permeability of groups are not